Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing a lovely early 1990s yellow gold Ulysse Narda, our striker San Marco. The timepiece, 40.2 millimeters in diameter in yellow gold, is 13.4 millimeters thick. 47.5 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We'll zoom out a little bit, throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and you can see it wears well. This watch is appropriate for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference, in my estimation. Though it's short across the wrist, it feels fairly stout, and I would say the smallest of small wrists probably wouldn't wear it well. So 14 centimeters in circumference being the minimum wrist size to wear this watch. And again, my wrist 16 centimeters. Taking a look at the hard and the software, the first thing you'll note is that it has a substantial strap, bolstered, thick, large rectangular scale alligator leather in a medium brown with a semi-gloss finish. You can see that there's a monotone stitch and then a sheer cut side showing you just how thick the layers of leather are. On the underside, we have a more natural calfskin, a brand new Ulysse Nardin factory strap, not crimped, not gouged, and you have a Ulysse Nardin pin buckle. And what you will notice is that the hall marking on the pin buckle is post-1995, and then the hallmarking on the case, there it is, is pre-1995. So pre-1995 is the era that this watch was created. It features a Jacquemont, or a striker, on the dial. We'll talk about that in a moment, but let's talk about the case. The lugs are sharply broken out from the case band. This is old school case construction. The lug and the case built separately, the lug inserted into a slot in the case, welded together, and then hand-finished to create a neat break between lug and case. This is a handmade and hand-finished case. There's a lovely fluting about the shoulder of the lug, and then the bezel itself is concave, and you can see it's stepped in somewhat from the case band, which has a lush and lovely compound curved profile. It's an elegant and graceful dress watch. It is a modular complication. This is the UN caliber 75, which at its base is an ETA 2892, and then on top of that you have the striking module, which is why the controls for the module are not in line with the center line of the Ulysse Norden crown. The dial is guilloche with a, a vague or a wave pattern at center, and then outboard you can see the hour and minute track is mother of pearl with a lovely, almost Art Nouveau or Breguet style, one might say, uh, Arabic numeral. It's somewhere between Art Nouveau and Breguet a little bit of a hybrid look. It's not quite what you'll see on a Breguet watch or a Patek Philippe, but it is very handsome and florid font. Applique yellow gold, as you can see, and yellow gold Jacquemot, as well as hands. There is a system over at two o'clock that will activate or deactivate the striking system. Now, if you want to activate the striking system, You just push the trigger down at 4 o'clock, and it will strike the hour. Now, it will strike automatically if you leave it on. Again, leave it on. It will strike the hour, and it will strike half hours. It will strike both. It, it is a very interesting system in that it is an hour repeater and an hour striker. Therefore, the name is apropos, but it is also an automaton. This is called a Jacquemot, or a striker, and the whole thing is inspired by the Piazza San Marco in Venice. St. Mark's Clock Tower features strikers exactly like this little guy, and if you look on the reverse, you can actually see the Lion of San Marco on the reverse side, a reference to the inspiration for this striking system, as well as the San Marco series. And you can see Ulysse Norden, the first two digits of the reference, 7-5, that is the movement inside. So let's talk about that movement. You have a module on top, that I believe to be a product of a collaboration between Ulysse Nordin and Christophe Claret. They are neighbors in Switzerland, and Claret's expertise in automa automaton and, and also striking watches makes him the ideal go-to for this. So I think that's where that came from. Again, you can turn it on or off. It will strike the hours and the half 
after the hour, on demand or on passant. Then you have the ETA 2892 bass, which is a bi-directional automatic winder that beats eight times per second. It gives you about a 36 hour power reserve in this watch. That's automatically wound, and it should be noted that to wind the watch, you turn counterclockwise. To wind the striking mechanism, you turn clockwise. You don't want to turn too hard or too far because eventually you will reach the end of the spring's travel for the striking system. So turn it with a ginger hand on the crown and you'll eventually reach the end and that means you are at the limit of its travel. Though the watch would have been 30 meters water resistant when new, I would not advise taking this watch into proximity with any amount of water ever. It is, after all, a striking watch and minimal seals in order to better transmit sound or a hallmark of striking watches. Reach out to tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.